Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Mohan Badu, and this is my friend here, Carl. Uh, we both work for um, um, CP team in Red Hat. Um, so, on as part of our jobs, we work on a lot of open source projects, in, which includes uh, Fedora, Apple, and uh, CentOS and CentOS Fame. Today, we are here uh, to uh, discuss about what is Apple Next and how is it re related to Apple and uh, what are the future plans for Apple Next and how we are going to create Apple 9 from Apple 9 Next. So with that being said, let's dive in. First, we need to understand uh, what is Apple. I guess uh, there were a couple of talks before, including Troy's just before hours, uh, explaining what um, what is Apple and usage statistics and Math, as Matthew Miller mentioned, or Troy mentioned, Apple is one of the most uh, downloaded um, parts of uh, a downloaded project of uh, Fedora. Basically, it stands for an extra packages for enterprise Linux. It's uh, it's the extra set of packages that uh, are not shipped in RHEL, so people can use these packages uh, in their systems. The currently the way that we are developing this Apple is basically we take a rel build route whenever rel goes to GA and uh, we uh, keep updating that build route uh, periodically and uh, people who want to maintain the packages that are not part of rel can request an Apple branch in Fedora Distkit and uh, build those packages against the uh, um, against that rel build route that we created. Um, so that leaves the question of what is Apple next and, uh, Carl, you want to take that up? Sure. To explain Apple next, we really need to understand better about what CentOS stream is. Uh, I've talked about this in other talks and, uh, you've probably heard about it in the tech news and things like that. CentOS stream is what is the chain describes what's happening in the CentOS project. The, the classic CentOS model that was what people used to know, um, that was where the RHEL, would, RHEL publishes its source code. And the CentOS project came along to rebuild that source code into another distribution that was as close to RHEL as possible. It wasn't identical, it wasn't perfect, but it was, for a lot of people, it was functionally the same. That was very useful for a lot of people. It built a good sized community. But a problem we had there was that it was mostly a community of consumers. There were very few people that contributed back, mainly because it was almost it was almost impossible to contribute back. The only way to contribute would be to help other people use it. Uh, we had you know some great volunteers in in forums and IRC and things like that, but it was always usage focused. You couldn't change anything in the distribution. What you got was what you got. Just whatever Red Hat threw over the fence which is not a way to build a healthy, healthy, thriving community or ecosystem. We've realized that. And what we're trying to do now is move CentOS upstream of RHEL. Now, some people may be confused by that and think, wait a minute, I thought Fedora was the upstream for RHEL. And it is. RHEL has two upstreams now. And a simple way to think of it is, an oversimplified way to think of it is, is that Fedora is the upstream for the next RHEL major version. CentOS is becoming the upstream for the next RHEL minor version uh, because t Red Hat has a policy of pushing changes upstream first. If you want to get something into RHEL, the answer usually is it should be in Fedora first. And likewise, if you want to get something into Fedora, it should be in an upstream project first. Now that, that makes sense and that works, except for once RHEL branches off from Fedora development, getting a change into Fedora after that point means waiting multiple years before you see it in the next major version of RHEL. There was no way to contribute into, into the current version of RHEL. And that's what we're trying to solve. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about compatibility problems or the potential for compatibility problems. And the thing to understand there is that CentOS Stream is as compatible with RHEL as RHEL is compatible with its own minor versions, say 8.3 to 8.4. That is to say it is very compatible and occasionally there are things that are incompatible. 
There's a whole document and process for how RHEL handles that called the Application Compatibility Guidelines. And every once in a while, a package that is on, on a lower level defined in that document might have a version change in the next version of RHEL, which will be reflected in CentOS Stream. Right now, the main problem we have with that is QT, QT in RHEL is at eight point, or 5.12 and has been rebased to 5.15 in CentOS Stream. And that brings up problems with packages, say in Apple, that link against Apple, uh, the link against Qt. Those packages need to be rebuilt in order to be comp fully compatible with CentOS Stream. And that was the problem that set the stage for what we wanted to achieve with Apple Next. All right. We came up with the idea for this, and the idea what what we wanted was to be able to enable packagers to rebuild these packages when necessary. It operates somewhat like Apple testing does. You're not trying to use, you're not using Apple testing by itself. It's used in conjunction with Apple itself. The difference here is, is that there is an ad additional build targets and branches for Apple next, because rather than just being short lived, like, uh, like a updates, an, an update that isn't in the testing repo for two weeks, this may need to live for six months until it's in the next public version of RHEL so that way it can be rebuilt in Apple proper. So we have additional branches and the Apple branches, the Apple build root builds against RHEL. The Apple next build targets will build against CentOS stream. It is a per branch opt-in. So just because you maintain an Apple branch, you don't have to participate in Apple Next. And in fact, the vast majority of packages don't even need it at all. The last time, before the QT thing happened, before that rebase came along, uh, gathering statistics on it, of the packages in Apple that installed cleanly on RHEL 8, 90, over 99% of them installed just fine on CentOS Stream with no other changes. But... If you are affected, if you if the, the package you want to install is one of those less than one percent packages, you don't care how many other packages install fine. The package that you care about right there doesn't work, and that's painful. So we wanted to solve that pain point, or at the very least, give maintainers a way to solve that pain point for their users. Uh, so we launched uh, the first version of Apple Next is Apple Eight Next. It corresponds with each each Apple branch. We launched that back in May, and we've had uh, almost, almost three, um, 376 builds so far when we were gathering the statistics for this talk. So it's already getting some uptake. Uh, the vast majority of those are thanks to our previous presenter, Troy, doing uh, getting QT and KDE things prepared and ready for the next major version of RHEL. The good news is, and what that helps everyone with, is that he can merge those changes in from the Apple 8 next branches to the Apple 8 branches whenever RHEL 8.5 launches and have Apple compatible with uh, RHEL 8.5 much faster than it would have been able to before. In the same way that CentOS Stream helps you helps anyone prepare for the next version of RHEL, Apple Next works with that to prepare you to prepare Apple for the next version of RHEL. So that I mentioned that we just have that for Apple 8 Next right now. Uh, Mohan, can you tell us about Apple 9 Next and what we're doing there? Yeah, so Apple 9 Next uh, is basically uh, a, it's built against uh, CentOS Stream 9. So we are currently working on that. Early this week, we were able to uh, mirror the uh, CentOS Stream 9 content. So we are planning to set up the, uh, Apple 9 Next as soon as possible, probably in the coming weeks. And uh, we wanted to use this Apple 9 Next, we wanted to leverage Apple 9 Next in building Apple 9. So how it is being done, uh, we are going to explain it now. So Apple 9. So previously, what happened is whenever RHEL, 9 go, or RHEL goes to GA, um, all the Apple maintainers will request the branches uh, for uh, Apple. Um, and then whenever based upon the uh, dependency order and everything, they sorted it out and then they will start building uh, some content in Apple 9. It takes months to have uh, something usable. Um, but with Apple 9 Next, we can leverage the, uh, uh, the, use, uh, uh, 
the packages that are already uh, building in Apple 9 Next create Apple 9 branches that are already uh, uh, have Apple 9 Next branches. So it's basically you're opting in. It's an opt-in for Apple 9 Next, but when you uh, opt-in for Apple 9 Next, you, you are automatically getting Apple 9 as well. So whenever RHEL goes into GA, uh, we, the release engineering side, create the Apple 9 branches that has Apple 9 Next branch for the packages. And we run a mass build of all these packages against the RHEL 9 build route. With that approach, uh, we are going to have some usable Apple 9 within a few days of uh, RHEL GA, which is a huge, huge advantage for all these um, distros, including RHEL and all the rebuild distros, uh, because RHEL by itself has a you know, less number of packages and uh, Apple is a huge thing on top of uh, RHEL and other, other rebuilds. And uh, uh, with that, we will take any questions. I wanted to clarify one thing real quick, Mohan. We mentioned how when Rail 9 goes GA, our plan is to take all, take all of those Apple 9 next branches and create Apple 9 branches, do a mass branching, and then attempt a mass rebuild. Yep. I mentioned before that Apple 8 Next is opt-in. You can just do an Apple 8 branch and ignore Apple 8 Next if you want to. The inverse is not necessarily true because the way we're looking at it is if you requ you're requesting an Apple 9 Next branch, you're opt also planning to do the equivalent Apple 9 branch because ideally you will just be able to move your package into Apple 9 and then not ever have to even rebuild it in Apple 9 Next again. If you do, it's there for you but then that should still be short lived up to six months until whatever change that necessitated it is in rel proper. And then you can just focus on the Apple nine branch again. Exactly. Well, now there is an API change that is uh, incompatible with the uh, minor version release, then they have to rebuild in Apple next branch, but most of the stuff in Apple nine branch will work on both center stream and rel. I don't see any Q and A's yet, but Neil says that we should make sure KD Plasma is the first thing in Apple Nine next, and Troy's gonna Troy's gonna yeah. see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just uh, KD itself will add what uh, maybe two hundred or some packages, Troy. <laughs> I um, I just want to oh four hundred some packages. But the dependencies is five hundred. Okay, uh, I I just want to mention other thing like. Uh, the mass build we will be running uh, after rel 9 goes GA, we might be running in um, multiple times just because um, the uh, the way the mass uh, mass build is done is uh, by alphanumerical order. So some of the dependencies might not be caught or not properly built in the right build order. So yes, Neil, it's a dumb mass build, yes. <laughs> so... We have to run it multiple times to capture all the uh, build dependencies. Make sure to go over to Q&A and submit your questions if you have any. Questions within the scope of this talk, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want, I know, Neil, I know you want OBS and Fedora, but... <laughs> Has, uh, okay, let's see, there is a Q&A. What's the GA of Apple 9? So no, no one's gonna say uh, for sure when that is, because we're gonna do it as soon as possible after RHEL 9 GA. Yep. No, no one's gonna give you an exact date for that either, but, we, but Red Hat has stated publicly in several places that we're now on a three-year major version cadence. So you can look at the release date of RHEL 8 and say approximately three years from that is when RHEL 9 GA is going to happen. Then, like Mohan said, we're hoping that within a few days of that, we can have an initial set of packages in Apple 9 based on the work people have done so far up to that point in Apple 9 next. 
So there is a question from uh, well, uh, Neil. Will it be possible for Apple Next branches to be deleted after the content is synced into Apple branches or merged either? So I I don't think we can. Uh, technically, I mean, we in, can. In theory, you can retire the branch. Yeah. And then if you need it again, unretire it, but that seems unnecessary. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, uh, for some reason, uh, they want to go through uh, adding an extra branch. They have to uh, go through with the uh, Fed request request branch process. Uh, if they want, they can retire Apple Next branch. And whenever they feel like they need to build it again in Apple Next, they can unretire it. My thought process is, is that if your package needs a Next branch, that means some of its dependencies are at a lower ACG level. And if that means if they were rebased once, they could be rebased again. So it doesn't make any sense to retire the next branch during the life cycle of that set of Apple branches. I'm going to do a pseudo Q&A that no one's asked, but I'll point out there anyways, because I just realized I, we should have put it in our talk also. Some of you may already be using Apple 8 Next if you're using CentOS Stream 8, and that's because we added a conditional weak dependency inside Apple Release. So that way, if you install Apple Release on CentOS Stream 8, it will conditionally pull in uh, CentOS or Apple Next Release. So some of you may already have that enabled and not even realize it. And the idea is that that'll work seamlessly because it doesn't have newer versions of every package in Apple. It is only rebuilds of packages in Apple 8 that need to be rebuilt to be compatible. The idea is that you'll just be able to DNF install the package name you want to, and it'll either come from Apple 8 if that's, the, if that's a compatible version, or it'll come from Apple 8 next if needed, which should be rare. And I didn't know that a CentOS Hyperscale spin also has it too. So thank you, Neil. Looking at the chat. Yes, Robert, really three years. Red Hat has publicly said we're on a three-year major version cadence now. And a six-month minor version cadence. Uh, another thing that I, I want to mention is probably some of you guys already know who maintain our federal packages. If they want to opt out from the mass build just because they want to handle uh, depth solving by themselves, they can add a no auto build file in their uh, district branch, uh, district repo under the branch, and that will skip the rebuild of the package. So there's another question from Kushal. Uh, for any third-party repository for the next, should we focus and build based on the Apple 8 next repo? It depends. For I mentioned that most packages don't need to worry about Apple next at all. They can just build regular Apple packages and they'll install fine. But if you do run into a case where there's an, a package, a dependency chain that's affected by a library change, th then you can target that also. What I think would probably be best for third-party repositories, uh, if they want to support CentOS Stream, uh, it benefits them because it helps them prepare for the next major ma minor version of RHEL. Uh, I know of one major project so far that's doing that, uh, the Z OpenZFS project. They're running their, their CI against CentOS Stream now because historically they have had long gaps after a RHEL minor version release where they were fixing their code to get everything to compile and work correctly. Now they'll be able to have that know ahead of time. In fact, they've actually helped us catch a, a, a kernel ABI regression and get it fixed before it made it into RHEL. So everyone's benefiting all around. Um, but what I will recommend, what I would recommend for things like El Repo and RPM Fusion, if they can, if they can ma manage the maintenance of it, run a regular repository and a next equivalent repository. 
similar to how Apple has it and that they will correspond the same way and then have it where if you're just using RHEL, you just use their main repository. If you're using CentOS Stream, you use the main repository and the next repository together, just like Apple and Apple Next. I'll also pitch like I did in the state of the Apple talk, the previous one. If you're curious about Apple and want to get involved, we absolutely encourage it. Um, Apple packagers are Fedora packagers. So if you're not a Fedora packager yet, look at the, look at, I would talk, talk to the join SIG about becoming a Fedora packager and getting a sponsor. Um, existing Fedora packagers have a shorter road to it. They can just start requesting Apple, Apple branches and building for it or, and, or Apple eight next branches. We need all the help we can get. Apple is one of, as Moan said, Apple is one of the most downloaded uh, parts of the Fedora project, but we have some uh, a lot fewer contributors than the rest of Fedora. So it is uh, not in a great state there. And the more help we can get, the more co-maintainers we can get, the better. So we can have good, good quality packages. Yes, Matthew pointed out, becoming a co-maintainer is a good route. Um, you can... If you, there's a package you want to help maintain, like let's say it's an Apple and it's not being and it's falling behind and not uh, Bugzilla's aren't getting answered, you can offer to become a co-maintainer to help fix a problem that you're having, and that's also a good way to become a packager in the first place. And Robbie, as Kushal mentioned, it's the join SIG. Yes, that can help you with uh, joining Fedora packaging committee. Yeah, the, the, uh, the package. link. I was about to grab that too. Perfect. Um, we also have a new process now that's become really helpful called the Apple stalled packages process. And if you open a Bugzilla asking a, asking another Fedora packager to create building to branch and build their package for Apple eight, if they don't respond, uh, there's a, an escalation process you can do now in the past, you had to just do file an unresponsive maintainer pro, uh, uh, initiate the un, un, unresponsive maintainer process in Fedora which results in every package from that maintainer coming under scrutiny and possibly being orphaned or assigned to you, which is a very big hammer if you just need one Apple package. We decided we wanted to have a smaller hammer. Uh, so what, what it is now is you can ask for, ask for an Apple 8 build. If they don't respond in a week, remind them once. If another week goes by with no response, you can file a ticket to be, to be added as a co-maintainer limited to the Apple branches of that package, which will let you request Apple branches and build for them. I believe that was Michelle that uh, pushed through, pushed that uh, new process through and uh, brought it to the steering committee as a good idea. He was trying to get a lot of packages added to Apple 8 for his work and was running into this same problem. So big, big shout out and props to him. Uh, Kushal, your question, the timeline should be increased because of COVID. Is, are you talking about unresponsive Apple maintainer timeline? Uh, um, we are giving them two weeks. I, I guess that's more than enough to just respond. Right. Yeah, there's no punishment for that one. That That's just you become a co-maintainer. Yeah. Having co-maintainers added to your package is not a bad thing. It is a good thing that we want to encourage. Um, Unlike the unresponsive maintainer, we are right, not removing them. That would yeah. your duty. Um, and we are not removing the maintainer as well from maintaining that package. We are correct. just adding the requester to become a co-maintainer. Right. The uh, the un unresponsive maintainer process, like I said, that's a bigger hammer that a lot of people are hesitant to pull. Um, you know, people take vacation, people are busy. You know, family things, COVID could be someone could be in the hospital. There's all sorts of things there. Uh, and that's all, all that is addressed in the Fedora un unresponsive maintainer process. It's a lot longer process and it uh, has further steps about trying to get in touch with the maintainer to see if they're even active in the Fedora project and even in open source in general, trying to get a hold of them. Um, the problem is it's, it's just too, too much for just, I need, I, I need this one package in Apple. I'm not trying to take over your package. I'm not trying to orphan your other packages. I just want to help you maintain this and solve the problem I'm trying to solve. There is a question from Robert. Uh, not directly Apple Next related, but are there plans for more badges related to Apple Next contributions? Currently, there isn't. 
but I like the idea. Maybe we need to talk to the badges team and uh, create badges for uh, next contrib contributions. Absolutely. Uh, I'd like to see that as well, though. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> I, I, I submitted a badge idea for um, similar to how we have a badge for serving on the Fedora Council. Uh, I propose a badge for serving on the Apple Steering Committee. Uh, hasn't seen much progress yet, but I know everyone was busy leading up here to Nest, so I'm not going to fault anyone for that. I'm hoping to get feedback from the design team on some of our uh, ideas for that for that badge. But absolutely, any any badges related to Apple that we don't – there are already a few badges for Apple. Uh, I believe they're related to number of updates submitted in Bodhi is the main thing. Um, okay. Any other ideas you have around Apple or Apple Next for uh, for contributions to get badges? By all means, submit them. Uh, you'll have my thumbs up for, from it or for it. <laughs> I'm just looking at uh, what Murray shared. What badge is that? Only if Pagger responds. Oh, yeah, the Apple Steering Committee. Oh, Apple, Apple Steering Committee. Okay. This fantastic art, uh, provisional artwork is uh, something that Troy, Troy uh, came up with. Uh, some of the other badges focus for Apple focus on ants and ties. Uh, the idea is that we're corporate drones because we care about putting stuff in Apple. And uh, mm. ties relate to business and the same thing. Uh, open for other suggestions there as well. Well, I say I we go ahead and call it. Uh, it's two yep. minutes until uh, the next talk. Give people a quick chance for a bathroom break or water break. Thanks, everyone, for joining, and we'll see yep. you in the other talks. Come chat with us in Pound Apple on uh, Libera IRC. Thank you, everyone.